Welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection online. Tonight we celebrate um, the Wednesday in Easter week uh, with our service of evening prayer right to. If you're watching this live on Facebook, you can find all the materials you need, a bulletin and the readings for this service uh, in our timeline below. And if you are watching the recording of this later on YouTube, you'll be able to find all of the various links that you will need to follow along with the service in the uh, description of the video below. So now turn in your bulletins or turn in page 116 in the Book of Common Prayer. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The confession of sin is a portion of the service that does not always need to be said. Um, the prayer book lists it as an option always. Um, it is to be encouraged, but in this season of Easter, we are reminded of the resurrection and our resurrection uh, to a new life uh, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So know at this time that your sins are indeed forgiven. And now turning in your bulletin or to 117 in the Book of Common Prayer, O God, make speed to save us, to which the response is, O Lord, make haste to help us. And then we will say together, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And since we are now no longer in Lent, we will add Alleluia. And now, turning in your bulletin, or turning to page 118 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us say together, O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. And now we will have the reading of the psalm. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 105, verses 1 through 8. You can find the psalm listed on the lectionarypage.net readings, which should be listed below if you are watching this live on the Facebook timeline, or again in the descriptions below if you are watching this on YouTube recorded later. We will say Psalm 105, verses 1 through 8 in unison. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds among the people known. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations. And then we'll say together, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He answered them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astound us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said to them that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was take, talking with us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been known to, made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. There are two things that we learn from our gospel reading this evening in the story of the road to Emmaus. One of those things is this. Jesus, as he meets these two people, as he meets Cleopas and his other follower that was with, with Cleopas, these two friends, Jesus isn't going to somebody that we normally think he might go to. These two are followers of Jesus. They're not part of the disciples, the 12, the inner circle, the ones that we always look to, to having these adventures and stories with Jesus. These are just two normal followers of Jesus. They're not part of the inner circle. They're not part of the folks that we would normally expect. And that's a good reminder to us 
because Cleopas and his fellow follower, they were alone together with each other, just as many of us are alone or with our loved ones or our immediate family members. In this time, it's helpful for us to remember that you don't have to be one of the 12. You don't have to be one of the chosen disciples of Jesus in order for Jesus to come there and be in the midst with you. Jesus is in the midst of these two, these other followers. And Jesus is in the midst with all of us as well. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter how holy you think you are or how holy you don't think you are. Jesus will be there. That leads to the other lesson that we learn from this gospel reading. And that's this, that we need to keep our eyes and ears open. Cleopas and his fellow follower didn't recognize Jesus at first. It took them a while. They heard all of these things, and yet they still didn't recognize him. But it was there in the breaking of the bread that they finally see Jesus. It's only because they kept their eyes open, because they were willing to see what was in front of them, that they were able to recognize Jesus. So we too need to keep our eyes and ears open because Jesus is there in the midst with us, but we won't recognize that. We won't recognize him unless we're paying attention, unless we're keeping our eyes and ears open to see and to hear him. So continue in these thoughts, continue to keep your eyes open, to pay attention, and to see the presence of God, to see Jesus there in the midst of you. Because it doesn't matter who you are or how you feel about how holy you are. Jesus is there in the midst of you. If only you will pay attention and see. Our service for evening prayer continues with the Song of Simeon, found in your bulletin or on page 120 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will say the Psalm of Simeon in unison. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And now continuing in our service, let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life 
everlasting. Amen. And now our service continues in your bulletin or on page 121 with the Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you, to which the response is, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our service continues with suffrages A, found in your bulletin or on page 121 in the Book of Common Prayer. You will say the lines that begin with the R for response, but for ease of doing this, I will say all of the lines. Um, so please just join me on those lines that have the R by them. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And now for the collects. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread, open the hearts of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead. We thank you for the blessing of the day that is past and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours through him who died and rose again for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of the bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. And now for the prayer of mission. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, 
Give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. And now I invite you at this time to hold up your own prayers um, to God, whether aloud in your homes or in the comment sections below or within the confounds of your heart. Lord Jesus Christ, be with all those who are sick or who are with those who are sick. Help them in their recovery and help us to do the work that we need to do so that less people will die from this disease. We pray all these things, all these things that we have held up to you in our hearts, in our words, in our minds, we ask that you hear them in your son's most holy name. Amen. Now turning in your bulletin or on page 125 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now let us bless the Lord, to which the response is, thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. That concludes our service for evening prayer for this evening. Just as a note, um, since we will be going back next week, uh, since there's not a proper liturgy um, after this um, for the days, 
there won't be set readings for us to go to. So we'll be going back to as uh, those who have been present physically for our service here know uh, to the daily office lectionary, which you can find at the back of the uh, Book of Common Prayer. Uh, so as part of that, the Psalms for that tend to be a little bit longer. So uh, we'll be doing um, a canticle instead. So uh, there will be a little bit of a change to the bulletin and how we've been doing that. So there will be a new bu bulletin uh, posted for our evening prayer services soon. Uh, and uh, other than that, our services will be going on as usual, and I hope you will join us for our live service at 10 a.m. on Sunday, uh, or uh, that you'll watch the uh, recorded version of that service later on YouTube. Have a great night, a great rest of your uh, first week in Easter, and um, uh, look forward to uh, seeing you all uh, online soon. Good evening.